Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Now, it is well known that I am one of the laziest reefers in the hobby. And that's because if there's anything which I can automate, I will do it 100% of the time. What I'm doing now is automating the removal of the water and also filling the tank at the same time. Now, previously I used uh, this watering can and also a couple of these barrels as well. But the reality is I didn't fancy doing that this time, so let me show you what I'm doing. Basically, I filled the tank up with RO water, and then I, as you can see, I'm draining it now, uh, because obviously the rocks were secondhand, I wasn't sure what was in them, uh, there will be some level of decay, so I filled the tank with water, I'm draining it down. Now what I did last night was I put in this tube, and I connected it to the sink. So, all night this has been draining. Now this morning, I decided to do the opposite and I am starting to fill the sump, but whereas last time I had to carry the water from the coral room into here, I decided I wouldn't do that this time and I have connected my RO tube all the way over to the coral farm. So um, that is making life a little bit easier basically. Now, although it looks like there's no progression, in this video at the start, there will be big because by the end of this video, I will have a fish in this tank. So um, that's a that's a bold that's a bold claim. <laughs> but okay, by the end of this video, I hope to have a fish in this tank. If not, at the start of the next video. Anyway, so one of the things I wanted to point out was you can see just how much crap the uh, the roller mat has taken out. Remember, there is no there's no organics in this tank. There's no food going in. There's nothing. This is literally whatever has has come off the rock and a reasonable amount of the, um, the reel has gone through. The other thing which I thought was interesting was that there was actually relatively high phosphate levels. So originally I was going to leave this for one week and then I left it for two, just to try and get as much out as possible. And the other thing I wanted to mention is one of the most common things that people said about this tank and the aquascape was that this piece here, this piece right here sticking out, looks like a penis. Now, if your penis looks like that, and this includes you, Reef Dog, who also said the same thing, you might want to get it checked. Now, that does not look like a penis, but imagine what it's going to look like when, on the tip, <laughs> interesting choice of words, I have like a, I don't know, a torch or a gonio or something that sways around, that's why I put that there. So, it's interesting because the aquascape was what people didn't like the most, but the reality is, I have to, I have to practice what I preach, and I don't care. And the reason I don't care is because this is my tank. So you should set your tank up the way you want it. Pick the livestock, the aquascape, the corals, everything you want about your tank. You should pick it yourself because it's yours. And don't worry what anyone else thinks because you're the only one who's gonna have to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. Bit of a life lesson there for you. Anyway, this is now just in here for show because it's now done. I just want to show you what I've done. And uh, this is new water, so I need to get the salt in. Right now, speaking of salt, this is the salt I'll be using. It's Tropic Marin Pro's Reef Salt. And the reason I'll be using it is because I have been using it for years on the coral farm and I'm very happy with it. I like the fact that the parameters are relatively close to natural seawater level. And I'm a man of routine. You can see by the equipment I use, I sort of just stick with what I know and what I'm happy with. And until I've been given a reason not to use it, I'll just keep using it basically. I'm not gonna lie, the original reason I went for this salt was because BRS did a test on all different salts and this one performed the best. So I thought I would just go with it because obviously at the time I uh, was setting up a new system so I could use anything I wanted. Right now these rocks are gonna be a key part to cycling the tank. So as I've said, I'm going to be using a bottle of bacteria, but that won't give you all the bacteria that is required that, uh, for a healthy tank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to smash this rock up I'm going to put it into uh, this, uh, this is just a Red Sea filter mesh bag. I'm going to put it in a dark area of the sump so that I can get bacteria on it, but it doesn't get all the pests that come with it. And then I will transport each, each piece from one tank, uh, from each of the tanks, each of the coral systems, into the angelfish tank. And that is because it will then have a whole variety. Because although our tanks all look the same, uh, BRS recently did a, um, a video series on uh, different types of bacteria and you can see that even though uh, different tanks have all different types of bacteria basically so to give it the best start possible and want to give it as much uh, variety as i can 
right now, as I'm sure you can tell by the noise, I'm back and also this little little sneaky shot of a fish tank here. Um, I'm back in the car room and the reason is I've got my first bag. This will be going into the sump section of the System 2. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of unwanted things which are uh, photosynthetic. So if you put it in the dark section, you're less likely to uh, basically transmit things from one tank to another. Now don't get me wrong, there are risks of doing it this way, but as far as I'm concerned, there's risks. As soon as you put your first coral in, there's a, there's a risk so of transmitting something. So I know what's in this system. I know the effort I, I go through to try to minimize the risks. And by putting in the sump, you'll uh, I'll be minim well, not you, I'll be minimizing it even more. Probably should have picked a word that was easier to say than minimalizing. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so it's literally gonna go in here and then after a, a week, maybe two weeks, I will be taking it out and then putting it into the coral farm. The reason I'm not putting in, I didn't do this a week ago, is because uh, at first the tanks will be incredibly sterile. So I'm gonna be starting with a bottle of bacteria first, uh, which can handle a sterile environment and then put putting uh, fish in. This bacteria will be used to a certain environment in these tanks and uh, I assume, but can't guarantee it, I assume basically, as soon as I put this into a sterile tank, it's not gonna survive. So, um, and then I'll, uh, then what was the point originally? So, right, let me get this in and um, yeah, I'll take you back inside. Something else to show you is that Jamie has made these two sort of like hanging shelves, uh, which are just screwed into, I don't know if you can see that, they're screwed into the underside of the cabinet. But uh, this is for the GHL Prophylux the dosing unit and the cage directors, and also there's two over here. Uh, this gives you a better idea of what they are. Um, there's two over here, which are the, um, these are for the automatic water changes, which are for the maxi doses. So the maxi doses should be turning up uh, hopefully next week. And, um, and then I can start, uh, start my water change, uh, my automated water changes basically. As you can see, I've added my first batch of salt. Uh, I put in the correct amount for this amount of water, but as you can see, it's all dumped here. Uh, once uh, there's more uh, flow, it will move around. The interesting thing about salt is that the reaction between salt and water actually produces heat. So I don't know if the bubbles are because there's bubbles trapped under the, under the salt or if that's part of the reaction too. Someone will probably be able to tell me, but it's really interesting because it feels really, really warm when you put your hand in. So as you can see, so much more like crap has come off the rocks the second time. Um, but look, it is what it is. It's exciting times now because as you can see for the first time, I now, this is now a salt water tank rather than a fresh water tank. So, um, and the more, uh, the more like sort of crap I can get out of the rocks now, the better because uh, as long as it's floating, it means that, um, the uh, the roller mat can take it right, out. Now it's several days later, as you can probably tell by my uh, pathetic excuse of a beard. Uh, but the I have some bad news for you. Remember, I said at the start of the video I was going to put a fish in. Uh, the good news is that the tank is full. It is the correct salinity and it's the correct heat. Uh, the bad news is this. If you're in England, we'll t you'll know what this is. This tells you that basically you missed the delivery, and the delivery I missed was for the bacteria for the tank. So rather than putting a fish in today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the fish which have the potential of going in, and I will let you choose which one. And by let you choose, I use that, you know, a bit loosely because I'll probably just pick whatever I want. <laughs> but I have got an idea of what fish I wanna go in. Uh, but I just, it'd be interesting to see which ones you pick if you pick the same thing as me. So I'm gonna take you in the coral farm. There's only sort of a couple of choices. And, um, and yeah, once I've done that, then, um, at the start of the next video, definitely 100% start of the next video, which will be in a week's time, guaranteed. I'm gonna make sure it. Um, I will. Um, I'll put a fish in this tank. Right now, as you can see, we are back in the coral room, and I have a few fish for you to choose from. So, a a strong contender for me would be this clownfish. Now, I've had this clownfish for about 12 years. Um, she's currently unpaired with any with an, There is she, she doesn't have a male with her. Originally, she was the male of a pair that uh, was with a platinum clownfish. And then unfortunately, I found the platinum clownfish in the catophilia. So um, since then, she's been on her own. So she is a high, a high possibility. I will not be putting the king eye in first. 
just because you know you got to test the water first but that's why i'm a bit hesitant to put her in as well because obviously 12 years is a long time so she has sentimental value to me uh the next choice i'm gonna th i'm considering uh the interracial couple so i've got a orange clownfish and i've got a black one uh i did consider pairing look it's almost like the cod band's going pick me i will not be putting a cod band in there first uh, i won't be putting a cod band in there for a while so the i did consider pairing this black one with the um with the one that's over there uh, i actually really really like that black clownfish but um, I thought it would be a bit cruel to, uh, to separate them. Uh, I won't be putting in any of the tangs. Not yet, just because of how aggressive they, they can be when they're, when they're on their own. But I, like, I want to practice what I preach as well. When I do a consultation with people, I advise them to pick easier fish. So I'm not going to be telling people to put in, say, a, a powder blue tang or even a regal tang uh, as, as their first fish because it would be a bad idea. So um, I'm gonna pick something that might not be particularly exciting, but uh, is a good choice. I'm considering also one of these little guys, which is a Springer Damsel. Now, if you don't know what a Springer Damsel does or is, Springer Damsels are, um, they're actually good for pest control because they eat flatworms. So some people have had issues with them uh, destroying corals as well, although I've never had that issue. Um, and I do have them in all of the tanks. Uh, as, along with the wrasses, so um, and without any problems. So I actually will consider putting one of those in. But as I said, the reason I'm showing you these is to let me know in the comments below what you think I should put in. Um, and then over here, this is the least likely ones that will go in. I have a pair of maroon clownfish, which as you can see is, she, the, the female's definitely aggressive, and, um, and the male is here. Now, these are an odd couple because the female lives in the torches, and the male lives in the Duncans, and they do get on occasionally, but most of the time they stay separate. Uh, the final choices are these Chromis. Now, Chromis actually aren't a great idea, aren't, aren't a great choice. Normally, you'll get say ten Chromis, and then you'll end up with like two because they slowly but surely kill each other. Now, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I think I've got eight in there. Uh, I did have nine originally. They killed one of them. These came from a tank breakdown, so I didn't actually want them, but um, they have been fine since then. So they've, they've stayed at eight, they've been at eight for a long time now. So hopefully there won't be any more aggression. So they're, they're a low likelihood of going in there because I genuinely don't, I don't really want them. Uh, and at some point they will move over to somewhere else. And I think that is probably it when it comes to, um, to fish choices. Many of these fish will end up in there, so I will eventually put in the tangs and the, um, and, uh, and the copper bands and different wrasse. But at the moment, when there's no algae, I don't want to be putting in things that eat algae because there's nothing for them to eat. And I don't want to be putting in wrasse because there's no sand in there at the moment. Uh, and although it doesn't look like there's sand in here, I have uh, little trays of sand under the, under the racks. But um, I am I also would consider the Antheas, but I think they're a bit too finicky to be putting in straight away. But yeah, I suppose so. Basically, either clamsel, uh, clamsel, either damselfish, clownfish, or um, or these chromis, which are chromis are a type of damselfish anyway. But um, but yeah, and then eventually some of the more exciting fish will go in there. Probably one of the Soho tangs, this one. Uh, but uh, I'm definitely going to be putting in this yellow tang this tank's not very clean so this yellow tang will be going in and also this gem tang will be going in there so um but that will take a little bit i, I want to be confident there's nothing wrong with the system first before i start putting in those sorts of fish right that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed watching the video uh, as i promised there will be a fish at the very start of the next video in that tank it has taken a while to get here but once um once the fish is in there, and once it's cycled, the project will go much, much quicker. Because I'll get, I'll get a lot more enthusiasm for it as well. People keep saying to me, they keep messaging me saying, like, why, why are you not going faster with this tank? Why are you not going faster with this tank? Well, the reality is, this is not my only tank. I have all of these tanks. So, um, but, you know, I move at my own pace and I'm happy. And, uh, and as I said, it will go, it will start to move a bit quicker. So, um, I hope you enjoy watching my video. Uh, please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. Have a good week and I'll see you next time.